There are lots of different kinds of people out there with all kinds of different goals that they want to achieve with 3D software. Being able to just jump into 3D without devoting months learning software first is a valuable thing for a lot of people who aren't ZBrush nerds like me. So that's why I'm reviewing this new 3D package called SelfCAD. The idea is that it's so easy to use that you can make 3D models yourself without much of a learning curve at all. So let's see how the features stack up. The first thing I was impressed with was that the interface is pretty intuitive and clean. SelfCAD does helpful things for beginners like visually explaining what the difference is between a vertex, polygon, and edge right here so you can choose which type of selection you want. Now, as simplified as this software is, it actually does a few really cool things that I haven't seen in more advanced programs. I'll mention some of those things as I'm going through the basics. Now, like any 3D software, SelfCAD has a way to create primitives. I actually prefer SelfCAD's way of making primitives over ZBrush. It just works fast and easy. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. Just go up to 3D shapes and you can pick any shape that you want. And then you get a variety of sliders here that let you change all the different properties of the different primitives. When you're happy, you can just lock it in with the check mark. And now you've got another object in your scene. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way a little bit. One thing I really like is its screw and a nut creator. It lets you customize a screw and automatically creates a nut that will fit it perfectly. Here's a feature that either doesn't exist in many more advanced software, or SelfCAD's implementation of it is much easier to use than other softwares. You can take a photo and turn it into a quick and dirty bas relief 3D model. It can even detect the background and remove it. If you want to go beyond ready-made objects, you can make your own. SelfCAD is all about doing things in the simplest way possible so that anyone can start making 3D models quickly. So, as you can see here, there's tools here for making 2D shapes that can then be extruded or revolved into 3D shapes. There's also a sculpting component to SelfCAD, and it has all the basic functions that you would expect from any other basic sculpting software. It uses a quick voxelization function to remesh, which you can run manually as you work. So it's a lot like using Dynamesh in ZBrush. Like any 3D software, you have tools and deformers for making modifications to your 3D models. Okay, so let's use some of these drawing and editing tools to make a simple object. To make things more straightforward, I'm going to go to my top view, and let's go into drawing and make a freehand object. Now there's lots of different interesting ways to make a freehand object. I'll start out with the brush. So what this does is it allows you to simply brush out the shape of whatever you want to make. So I'm going to make a simple skeleton key. We'll get a bigger draw size here. I'm just gonna fill in this area. Now this red circle is actually going to be a negative space, but I'm gonna fill this in so there's no hole. But if I left a red circle there, there would be a hole. So we've got the top of the cranium for the skeleton key done. Let's add in a little bit more here. And then let's add in the teeth. So I'll just get a rectangle and we'll just draw in a rectangle here. And now let's get the main shaft of the key. So I'll just draw in another rectangle. And then we'll get some of the teeth here on the key. So just drawing some overlapping rectangles and it'll just form into one solid shape when we're all done. So you could combine freehand splines or circles or ovals to make this shape. So I'm gonna do one more thing here. I'm gonna go back to my brush and let's set it to erase. And what I'm gonna do is put in little holes so we could put this key on a key ring, for example. So that'll come out a, a hole in the 3D object eventually. So later on, I'm gonna put some eyes in, but let's just get this basic 3D shape for right now. So when we're done, we can go ahead and then click on the check mark. And you can see it made a three-dimensional object. Now let's use some other features to cut some depressed eye holes in here. Now I don't want the eye holes to go all the way through, so I didn't make it the way I made this hole. I'm gonna make it a different way. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and let's go up to drawing and 3D sketch this time. And I'm gonna click on spline sketch. And what we can do is we can either hold down, click and drag to draw out a line, and then we can release the click. And what we can do is like also click out uh, individual spline points 
but I want to close this. So you want to make sure you're getting that green dot and that's going to close that spline. And just click. And now it's going to try to continue that line, but I don't want to continue it. So let's hit escape to lock that in. Okay, now let's draw the other eye. This time, instead of holding down the mouse, I'm just going to click uh, around and it'll just create a nice rounded curve for me. You could do it either way. And then when we want to close this, we'll just bring it right back up to that beginning point and click once and then hit escape. Okay, maybe I could have spent a little bit more time to make nicer uh, shapes here, but this will work for demonstration purposes. So when we've got these splines drawn, what we can do is exit that. And now you see we've got two objects. We've got our original key and we've got the splines. So let's click on this so we've got both selected. And now we can go up to utilities and cut. So what this does is it takes the shape of that line and it cuts out that shape from the other object as long as the lines are sitting perfectly on the surface of that object. So let me rotate my view around a little bit here. And now what I can do is go to tools and extrusion. So what this does is it either lets me pop up that selection or I can push it down in. Now we can get some depressed eye holes in here. Now I could cut this all the way through by grabbing this green arrow and bringing it down until it snaps onto that back side. And then when I click that to lock it in, it'll actually cut that hole through, but I don't want to do that. I just want to have a little bit of a depression up here. Okay, so let's lock that in. All right, so you can see we've got a simple object going here with just a few splines, a little bit of drawing, and a little bit of extruding. So moving on, SelfCAD has some Boolean features, but it doesn't call them Boolean like all other software because your average person doesn't know what the word Boolean means, and the word Boolean just sounds funny. So SelfCAD uses the term stitch and scoop. So to use this, what you want to do is have two objects selected. So in my scene, I've got this sphere and I've also got a torus. So I'm going to hold down shift and click on the torus. And then let's go to stitch and scoop because this works with two objects. So what we have here are a couple different settings. And what this does is it's basically like adding or subtracting two objects from each other. So what we could do is fuse two objects together with union. And you might not notice too much of a difference, but if we turn on the wireframe, what you can see, actually let's uh, save these changes first, let's lock that in. Okay, so if you look at the wireframe, you can see that it's actually fused these two into one solid object. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that. So now we've got two separate objects again. So let's try basically the same thing, but uh, with the subtraction now. So what we need to do is define which object is subtracted from the other one. So let's subtract the torus from the sphere. So it thinks about it for a second. And what you can see here is it is now cut out the shape of the torus from the sphere. So this is a really powerful way to create all kinds of different shapes that are hard to make any other way. While you could technically use the models you create in SelfCAD for basic games and animation, this software is more geared towards 3D printing output. So you've got a variety of options for sending models to all kinds of different printers. So let's sum up. SelfCAD shows a lot of promise as an easy to use tool to just jump in and start making things. Thanks for watching. SelfCAD has a free trial, so please go to selfcad.com and try it out. Okay, good luck and let me know in the comments what you think. See you next time.